Hello, good morning, friend. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a little frog in my throat. All right, I hope you're doing really well. I'm looking forward to being back on this station here with you um, each week. Hopefully, at least one to two videos a week for you all to encourage you, inspire you, give you um, long tips, short tips, um, and any kind of discussion pieces you want to have around non-diet counseling skills. And we can also throw in some um, some business work as well, if you'd like, and um, doing all of this from a body-based lens, and that's my goal. So I want to talk real quickly this week because here in the um, United States, it is Thanksgiving next week, and it is ch a challenge, as you know, for most of our clients to have a holiday dedicated essentially to like a meal, you know, and not just a meal, but like um, – Lots of variety, lots of ways in which people can't maybe necessarily hide some of the disorder patterns. And so it's stressful. And you may have already been experiencing it this week. I um, actually have a lot of clients that once Halloween starts approaching, they're already really concerned about like the holiday easy eating season, they call it, and need a lot of reassurance, a lot of problem solving, and a lot of reminding them. So a few tips for you today. Not that you all need them, but I'm just going to encourage you to remember to use these. Um, maybe it's some things you haven't heard of before. Maybe it's some things you're totally already doing. I know I like, I, I, I appreciate reassurance that like I'm on the right track. So maybe this will help strengthen you too. All right, so let's get started. Is if you have a client that's really afraid of overeating, whether they will or they won't, um, or if that's their habit or their pattern to um, overeat or not, help them have like at least a mental strategy of how to manage their food. So, for example, I have a lot of people plan out, not, eat, not sometimes on paper, sometimes exactly what they're going to do because without that containment, they're not going to be able to settle at all. They're going to be ruminating, anxious, whatever. But for clients that just need to recognize that the Thanksgiving food um, is it magical weight gain food that they they need to kind of have a sense of like how the day is going to go so they can actually see themselves eating in a way that feels good like they don't have to eat everything that's available they don't have to get over full but they do recognize that there's a way to get in their favorite foods and still feel satisfied and if they don't feel satisfied how to make a decision do I go ahead and eat more and be a little extra full or do I need to, um, you know, can I wait and do not so much as a distraction, but just recognize that that food is going to taste good, whether I eat it now or later, but I might physically be more comfortable later. And so working through all that. And so that's the food part. So if you could even imagine them helping them do like ideas that they might have a breakfast or lunch or if the Thanksgiving meals at lunch, um, what they're going to do the rest of the day after the bigger meal how they're going to make that work. And this is for people with or without meal plans, people doing intuitive eating, people who are relatively feel kind of free, but when they get in higher anxiety situations, they start to lose track. Um, and they're neurocepting more towards like the fear versus that they can trust their bodies. And so I think that's really important. So I'm going to be putting, I'm hoping it's done today, but you will definitely have access to it uh, today's Tuesday. Definitely probably by Thursday, um, something you can give to your clients um, that is like a little mini class. Basically, it's free um, and they can just get a sense of like how I help people prepare for the holidays um, because I, you know, and some of your clients are not going to need this. They're going to think like I don't need this much hand holding, but there's also a lot of um, self-care materials in there and just some like little points to remember that they have on paper. They have this pretty little PDF and the audio that can really help them. And so lastly, I want to mention the mental emotional aspect around helping your clients remember. This is like tip one is the food. Tip two is the regulation. And tip two is going to be help your clients get as grounded and have as much space as possible for themselves. So if your clients are lucky enough to be going to either maybe maybe they don't. There's so many permutations of what our clients go through. They could be by on their own. They could be with friends. They could be with family. They could be with family that they can't stand or they feel unsafe with um, or family they feel safe with. It's just maybe the house was 
there's just more food um, and it's hard to feel understood. So what we want to offer our clients is this is I already have a plan for self care. And my guide has that in there too, it is a plan for self care for the days leading up a play plan for self care that day. And maybe even the day after of like how they're going to spend their time and provide themselves with more care, not less when things get busy, when there's more, um, and again, I would say, at least for me, I would say, honestly, 100%. Sometimes there's an outlier until only like maybe one out of, let's say, 20 clients that isn't a highly sensitive person. But the people that come to me usually are all highly sensitive people on some on the spectrum, and they're going to feel things inside them a lot. And so we need to help our clients help them accurately nerve up like what's happening. Is it out there? Is it in here? Is it my beliefs? is this actually true that this feels like it's coming from the outside and it's so uncomfortable. And so, you know, really helping them map that out a little bit too is something I would really recommend. And my third tip, and this goes along with the self care is something I used to do. And it was extremely helpful in circumstances where I was not in my own comfort zone. There was nowhere outside to escape to. I did something that I call bathroom vacations a lot, which is take your time, go to the restroom, ground yourself, help your clients find their feet, their, their back against the wall, um, wash their hands extra time, but remind your clients to give themselves some space. Um, you know, and this is not even talking about like the food and body talk that's been going on. That's a whole nother discussion that takes probably half to a whole session to help us navigate our clients through. If you're interested in how I do it, um, helping our clients part of it's going to be um, in this guide that um, this kind of mini class I'm going to be putting a link here for free for your clients or if you're interested please put an emoji below in the comments if you watch this and um, if you would like me to do another video about that this week so today's Tuesday I definitely can do it on Thursday that would be November 21st if you want me to do a video about that I will do it all right, thank you all so much for watching. Um, just let me know in the comments below if you want me to do another video and be looking out for that guide, which I'll post here between today and Thursday. So it could happen over the next three days, but it'll be there. All right, we're just kind of rebranding it and making it look pretty. You know, it's, I've kind of redid it several times and, you know, I don't, I don't like it to get stale. So, all right, thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.